So this is today's project. This is an Adderall. Uh, I think it's a 24C15 and it has a 20B1 chassis and a 12 inch picture tube. This is kind of a weird TV. It actually has two chassis on the inside. The TVs I've worked on so far, they only have one chassis with all of the tubes on there. But this one has a chassis on the top that has the sweep and basically everything except the power supply. And then on the bottom, it has a power supply and an amp. So what we're going to try to do is a controlled power up of this. We're going to try to reform the capacitors that are in there, find out if they're recoverable or not. And we're just going to see if we can get some sort of picture on the screen. I don't really care how good it looks right now. We just want to get some sort of image on the screen. And that will tell us that, you know, the major parts are good, like the flyback, the picture tube, unobtainable parts, you know. So the first step, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take out... Let me just flip this around real quick. Okay, so here's a look inside the set. Came with the original back. Nice to have. Now, if you look, it seems like most of the tubes are Admirals. I see that one's a Sylvania. Admiral, there. Here's the power supply. Power transformer, 5U4, 6X5. And I think back there is a 6V6 and a... It's either a 6SN7 or a 6SQ7. I haven't checked yet. But I think what we're going to do next is we're going to pop these two tubes out and we're going to put in some solid state replacements in order to try to reform the capacitors. So here are the solid state replacements I made. These are not permanent in the slightest. These are just to give the filter capacitors a little gentle reform. I don't know. I just am a little worried about just giving it full line current, especially on a set from 1948 thereabouts. So I think we're ready for action. Okay, I've got the solid state rectifiers installed, but I'm kind of doing stuff in the wrong order. I'm going to take the high voltage cover off to inspect what's going on inside and also to take out the horizontal output tube. I'm just going to take these out. Here's where I make a fool out of myself. Okay, nothing obvious on the first look. really pick up from the base, not the glass. That's pretty cool. Has an Admiral horizontal output tube. These are usually driven pretty hard, so if this is original, that's a pretty good indication that this set does not have very many hours on it.
Oh, high voltage rectifier is replaced though. This is a Raytheon. And it seems like someone might have replaced the damper load resistor in the back. See that resistor back there? The original was much longer and those have a habit of burning out and the symptom that they'll give when that happens is that you'll have excessive width but the set will still work even if that's open it's just you'll have very poor horizontal linearity and the uh, just excessive width okay so since the cord is on here I'm going to have to go get one of my cheater cords and hook this up in order to plug it in. Okay, so I got dug up one of my cheater cords. I have the meter hooked up between the chassis and to part of the diodes where the 5U4 are. So this is the cathode of what would be the 5U4. So this should be our main B plus voltage. So I'm going to turn my variac on. I'm going to slowly increase this voltage. We're drawing about half an amp. Okay, so that's 60 volts in. And we're sitting at about an amp and a half. That seems a bit high. But the voltage seems steady. Tubes are just barely starting to glow. Okay, that's 100 volts. I'm going to go play with the controls in the front. are lighting up. We got quite a hum there. Oh wow! Look at that. Almost 100 volts AC there. That's no good at all. So, fortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to power this up right now. Got way too much AC right there. Okay. Okay, let's think about our next plan of action. Okay, skipping forward a bit, I've taken the chassis out and I have it on my workbench because after seeing the high AC voltage on the capacitor after the 5U4, 
pretty good indication you have to take it out and do some work on it. And if we look down here, we see that that capacitor in the past has let some of its insides leak out. And it's right on the bottom. I'll have to clean that. So, it's on the workbench right now. Upper chassis, lower chassis. Here's that capacitor. And I installed some replacements right here. Uh, since the new ones were so small, I thought it was best to just to have them directly on the tube socket itself. There are some free terminals right here that are unused by the tube. And then there are some convenient grounding tabs behind on the tube socket itself. So I thought that was better than adding an external terminal strip or something like that. I've also replaced a few critical capacitors in the audio section. That is the grid coupling cap for the 6V6. And this is a capacitor that goes across the primary of the audio output transformer. So just make sure we don't have any trouble with those. And with those replaced, I'm going to try to power it up and see what difference that makes. Okay, so we're ready for another power-up attempt. I have the scope hooked up to the grid of the horizontal output tube, and I have the horizontal output tube taken out so that if it's not running, it doesn't hurt it or anything. I have the tube rectifiers back in. Uh, the capacitor for the five, five, uh, sorry, 6x5 was fine, so I left it. The replacement capacitors are in there for the 5U4. So I'm going to turn it on and hopefully we'll see a waveform from the horizontal oscillator. Oh, I hear the vertical running. Let's see if the camera can pick that up. Vertical's running, everything's warmed up. We don't have anything on the grid of the horizontal output tube. So, that's where we have to start digging. I'm going to take a look at the schematic now. Okay, this is the part of the schematic that we're interested in right now. This is the horizontal oscillator. And not quite sure what I would be suspect of at first thought. I think probably I'm most interested in that 0.05 right there. If that was shorted, then that grid would be tied to ground and it wouldn't oscillate. Also, maybe if one of these resistors was open, it wouldn't get enough power to run. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check resistors and capacitors with it turned off. And if that doesn't reveal anything, I'm going to turn the set on and start measuring voltages. So I think that's a good place to start. Okay, so this is my capacitor leakage tester right here. It is basically a high voltage power supply with a small variac and a neon light. And if we, this is the 0.05, if we connect it to this and turn it up, we can see how it tests. That's pretty bad. So that's a, that's a 200 volt cap. And at 50 volts, we have leakage. So that thing's pretty much, I wouldn't say shorted, but that's, that's pretty shorted. Just for kicks, I'll measure the value. It's 
it's a little far off. I mean, you know, it's supposed to be 50 nano. It's supposed to be 50 nano farads. It's measuring 87. So that's kind of what these do when they get leaky. So I'm going to put an orange drop in and I'm going to see if that changes anything. Just for comparison, I thought I'd show what a good capacitor tests like. Uh, this is not the one I'm going to put into the set, but I think it's good for illustrative purposes. This is a 0.047 at 100 volts. This is one of those cheap yellow caps that you see floating around. So remember, this is a 100 volt rated capacitor, but... Look at that. This 100 volt capacitor going all the way up to 500 volts without leakage. New parts are better than old parts. There you go, about 0 0.45, 0 0.045, so like to keep something original, but you know, if the part is bad, you know, you kind of should replace it, you know. In the future, I might heat these up and restuff them, but for now, I'm just going to keep them, and I'm just going to put modern parts in there for now. I was able to find a 0.047 orange drop, so I put it in there in, re in replace of the 0.05. So now, I'm going to turn it on and see if we can get a horizontal drive waveform at all. So let's see. Okay, I heard the vertical come up, but we still don't have any drive there. So I think I'm going to keep checking parts. I think I might have found a problem. This resistor right here, this 270K, I was just doing some spot checks in this circuit. I measured that. And this 270K measured about 5 meg. So let's see. There we go. About four four megs so I'm fairly confident that that will fix it I'm gonna put the horizontal output tube back in and I'm gonna see if we can get a picture on this now okay so I have replaced that 270k resistor right there and as a preventative measure, I've replaced two more caps in the horizontal circuit. Uh, I replaced the boost filter, which is that 0.15. And I also replaced the screen bypass cap on the horizontal output tube. I've heard that those can be, can cause problems. So now I'm going to uh, power this up again and see if we're able to get the horizontal drive It's going to be a challenge to get this all in shot, so I apologize. Okay. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Oh, 
Look at that. Oh, nice. Oh, focus works. So it looks like we're picking up FM radio stations now. And it looks like the video stage is working. You can see the modulation on there. So I'm going to turn on the VG91 and see if we can get a signal, get a test pattern on there. see the chroma dots in there. Oh, I won't focus. Well, there's little little dots scrolling. that down. That looks great. The camera's not picking it up very well. But there's actually lines all the way out to here. So I think the next step we're going to flip it right side up and just see what it looks like. Okay, so it's all flipped back up. And I noticed something when I was playing with it earlier. The horizontal is not very good. Like, I mean, it's generating high voltage and good sweep, but there's too much sweep. Uh, you see how there's There's like a little bar over here. It's like folded over. I th so I think we have too much width. And as I was talking about earlier, I think that might be caused by a power, the damper load resistor being open. But because I think there should be an extra bar over here to the side, but it's just not, not quite doing it. That just it, it looks it looks really good as it is all things considered like this still has you know 90% of the original parts in it I think I, I replaced one resistor and I think four capacitors to get to the stage where it's at now so there is improvement that could be made but I just I don't think it would add very much. It, it would re 
it would add to the reliability, but I think the set's playing pretty good as it is. things like the linearity isn't so great at the top but those are those are issues to figure out when more stuff has been replaced so I'm gonna go check check the horizontal uh, damping load resistor and see if that's open or not in order to get access to the resistor, it immediately became obvious I need to take this cage off. So it's just going to be just, I think, the quarter-inch screws all the way around. One nice thing I have to say about this is that I don't think any of the screws are missing. So that's a just a nice touch. Uh, and, you know, in spots where I've removed the dust, it looks pretty pretty great underneath. I don't see any rust, but, you know, I'll, I'll clean it once I have it working, but the dirt really doesn't bother me too much. It doesn't bother the tubes, so I'll just leave it for now. Okay, this is the resistor out of the set. It looks like a replacement because I, I think in the videos I've watched, the original would have been much longer. It looks slightly discolored. And measuring it with a ohm meter. I mean, you get about 12 mega ohms, so that's dead. Uh, for the 20B1 chassis, uh, like, they had different values for the damping resistors in the different models. The 20B1 has an 8.5K in there. That's kind of an odd value, so I had to kind of bodge one together. There are two 20K wire-wound resistors. They give 10K. And then there is a 56K, you know, probably a few watts. So these are 20K, 20 watts each. We got about 8.52K. So that's, I've, that, that's more than close enough. I just soldered some extra wire onto here and I made little loops so that when I install this into the set, I can just thread the original wire through these loops and just solder it in to have a good mechanical connection. Uh, an important thing when you're working on any electronics like this is make sure that when you're soldering, have a good mechanical connection. Solder isn't very strong, and it's, its only job is to provide the electrical contact, the mechanical connection that you make with the wires before you solder it is the thing that actually actually holds the part in place. So, you know, mis mistakes I've made in the past that you see other people make. I've installed the damper tube resistors in there. I used the original mica washers in the screw. Uh, soldered nice and strong. So let's power it up and see if the excessive width has been fixed.
CRT base, no, the socket that plugs onto the CRT base is a little bit loose, and sometimes the filament gets disconnected from 6.3 volts, so you have to, something to fix. So obviously we've lost horizontal hold. Makes, makes some kind of cool patterns though. Okay, so I'm going to put the horizontal hold control in the middle, and I'm going to adjust the core on the back. Okay. That looks pretty good. There's no distortion on this end, but as you can see, it's moved a little that way. Oh. So there's a focus magnet on here. has springs on it, so if I shift this, you see it shifts the, shifts it over. So I'm going to adjust those screws and see if I can make it any better. Okay, so after messing around with the focus coil for a little bit and the height and linearity, this is where we're at now. It looks excellent. You know, as far as I can tell, that's a pretty good circle. Oh, still a little bit. Still a little bit of convergence issues right at the top, but that's not too bad. Bandwidth is pretty good. I see, I see lines I can just barely see the lines over here. So I'm not sure if I really want to mess with the alignment at all. I know Bob Anderson, once he aligned his, he, I think he had lines all the way out to here, but they, they stop just about there. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with any of that. So yeah. For replacing a few parts, that really looks fantastic. CRT is nice and strong. This was really a this was really a lucky find. Now I just have to ponder the question in my head, do I want to go and replace all of the old parts that are still in there? Because remember, I've only replaced like a handful of parts. There's still a lot of old wax caps and electrolytics in there. And, you know, my philosophy is usually don't, don't break something that isn't, don't try to fix something that isn't broken. But for longevity's sake, I think I might, might have to go and replace a few caps. You know, mission critical ones. Like, I think there's a few paper caps in the vertical and there's a, electrolytic in the cathode of the vertical output tube that I might replace, but usually if that was bad it would cause linear linearity issues I think at the bottom of the screen, and we don't have any of that. So I think for the time being I might just leave it alone and, you know, I don't run these things to death, you know, I don't watch them five hours a day just, you know, once in a while. So, I might just leave this until other problems crop up, but for now, that's definitely a happy note to end on based on where we started. Okay, here's a final look at things before it all goes back to bit together.
I just did I just gave it a quick dust off. Uh, high high voltage cage is back on. So now we gotta try to get those back in there. Okay, it is all put back together. All of the screws are in. Speaker is soldered back on. I'm going to leave the high voltage cover off though because I, I kind of like it to have a little bit more ventilation. But I think we're ready to give it a test. Okay, so here's the set all put back together. I have it hooked up to a RF modulator going to an HDMI to composite signal converter. And I have that hooked up to a laptop. So, let's see how it does. So, as you can see, the picture is quite excellent. It's very sharp. And believe it or not, I'm able to read this text up here. So, like, there's the text on top of the YouTube video. And you can read... Just barely read that down there. So it has a really great picture. And it's pretty stable. Once it warms up, it doesn't seem like the vertical or the horizontal drifts at all, even after running it for a few minutes. So, I think that's the end of this video. 
Thank you very much for watching, and there'll probably be more videos on this in the future where I'll probably replace more of the capacitors and make it more of a permanent repair.